Hey everybody, this is Jacob with Mortgage Coach Software Support. This video is to show you how to install and configure your RateWatch application. Now you should have received a welcome email from us and that had a link in it to download your RateWatch tool. But if you don't have that in front of you, you can always navigate to www.ratewatch.com forward slash download. And you'll see the screen that I'm looking at right now. Now when you hit the install button, you're going to be prompted to install Adobe Air if you don't have it. If you do have it, it'll just fire you right into the RateWatch installation. So go ahead and click install here. It'll ask you if you want to install Adobe Air and that one's required so the checkbox is automatically static for you. And then it'll ask you if you want to add a shortcut icon to your desktop or start the application after installation. I usually leave all three of these checked. If you want to change the installation folder you can do so by clicking the little folder icon here and you can place it wherever you'd like to on your system. Now when you hit continue you're going to get the Adobe Air agreement so you want to hit I agree on there and then it will start installing the application. So once the application is finished installing, it's going to land you at the RateWatch splash page. Now you're going to want to use your credentials to log in here. Now if you've never logged into any of our products, it's going to prompt you to reset your password when you first log in. However, if you've already logged into Edge or RateWatch, your login here will automatically take you in. One thing to remember is that both Edge and RateWatch use the same login and password. So if you change your email address in Edge, just remember that it's also changed your login for both RateWatch and Edge. Now this is the home screen in RateWatch. This is the first screen you see when you first open the product. And you can see that we're looking at candlestick charts here. Now these charts are showing the mortgage-backed security movement for the day. And as you can see, when they're green, that's positive movement. When they're red, that's negative movement. Now these have a direct effect on what bond prices versus rate prices are going to do. For instance, if we have a lot of green on our chart, we know that that's good for our rates because our rates are going to go down. Now when you have a lot of red, that means obviously things are going down in the bond market, which means rates are going to go up on your side. So the trick to using this tool is to eyeball it and find out what the trends are. See if you can kind of identify how long it takes for your lenders. See if you can identify how long it takes for your lenders to issue a reprice, whether it be positive movement or negative movement. Now you have different agencies that you can choose. We watch the Fannie Mae 30 year by default, but you can always change it to the Ginnie Mae or the U.S. Treasury if you wanted to see what those are doing. Now we have it set at the 3% coupon right now, but as that changes, and it does periodically, you can pick different coupons here to follow. Now the analysis points, these allows you to show different analyses along your rate watch chart. So for instance, if I wanted to show the 10 day moving average, I would click on that. And you can see that this is the moving average over the past 10 days. So if you picked any point in here and looked at 10 days re previous, you'd find that this is the average of what the bond prices were. Now you have multiple ones that you can choose here. You have a 30 day, a 100 day, and a 200 day moving average. So you can see generally what the trends are looking like going forward. You also have support and resistance. So let me remove this. Now support is the bottom level of the trading range. Now what we expect is that if bond prices drop below this point, we're starting a new trend. So we like to eyeball these lines to see where we should be looking for a drop. Now alternatively, there's a resistance line. This is the top level of the trading range. If we see trading spike above that range, we should expect to see a new trend going in that direction. Now you can show all of them if you'd like, or you can show just singles, or you can show none of them at all. So you can hit clear all and it'll clear all of them out for you. Now you also have different time ranges you can look at. By default it's going to start off at the one month range but if you wanted to just look at the last 10 days you can do that. Or you can look at a three month period of time. Or if you hit max it'll show you all the way back to February. Now the day watch tool, this is the one that allows you to see minute by minute what the bond pricing is doing. So you can tell in this case we're looking at today's date and you can see that our bond pricing dropped and then spiked up. Now it hasn't gone above or below a 15 basis point increase or decrease so we haven't issued any alerts today. But once it hits that threshold you will see an alert come out both in your rate watch you'll get a little pop-up alert down at the bottom and you'll also get an email alert. So anytime there's a huge movement in the market you're going to be notified immediately. Now the alerts section, this shows you any alerts that we've issued today and as I said before we haven't issued any alerts today but had we you'd see them itemized in a line here. 
Edge Views shows you the amount of views that you're getting on your Edge Report. So if you choose to click the button that uh, notifies you when your Edge Report has been viewed, you'll see it show up in this log here. Now you'll also get an email about that as well as a pop-up notifier in your Ray Watch. Your Edge Call Log, these are callback requests issued from the Click to Call function. So if you choose to use the Call Me Now button on your reports in Edge, if somebody clicks on that, you'll see that it's actually connected. Now if you choose not to accept the call, you'll see a callback request. And this tells you what time they've requested to be called back and what date. Now the commentary section has two different types of commentary in it. There's expert commentary and member commentary. In the expert commentary, you'll see that Dan Rauch does a daily segment where he does a video for you to show you exactly what's going on with the market. Now there are other experts who also contribute. Neil Trinary does a column every day, which he gives you basically the text updates for what's going on with the bond pricing, and he also issues a bit of advice down at the bottom of his column. Now besides the expert commentary, you also have member commentary. This is what your peers are saying. So you can see that we've got different advice from different people who are watching the bond market right now. There's lots of great information in here that allow you to know what other people in your field think the bond market is doing for today. Now the Lenders tab. The Lenders tab allows you to watch and see what lenders are doing as a response to what the bond market is doing. So as you can see, today we've had 36 with better repricing and 58 with worse repricing. So there hasn't been a whole lot of movement in one direction or the other. But you can see that I'm looking at all lenders. We track some 105 lenders for this and we get an amalgamation of all their rate sheets to find out what their average movement is. So your movement in your individual marketplace might be slightly different on this, but this gives you a global idea of what these lenders are doing across the country. Now you can choose to look at the different types of loans if you wanted to see just FHA pricing, just conforming pricing, or jumbo pricing. You can also choose if you want to see fixed pricing versus adjustable pricing. Now there's one more part of this. There's still the My Lenders area. Now My Lenders allows you to track individual lenders so you can see what those ones are doing specifically, rather than just looking at the All Lenders list. Now in order to set up who your lenders are, we'll go to the Settings area. Now you can get to the Settings area by clicking these two little cog wheels. It'll open up the settings, and when you choose to, you can enable your email notifications, you can enable commentary emails, and you can enable repricing alerts. And again, these, these would be emailed to you and they'll pop up in your rate watch anytime there's a plus or minus 15 basis point change in the market. The last step is to enable your text messages. If you do want to receive text messages, check the box here and enter your cell phone number in. One thing to remember is that these text messages do come from a third party carrier, so they're going to be a short code. If you find that you're not receiving your text alerts for some reason, you'll want to call your provider and make sure that you can receive third party text alerts from short codes. Now the update schedule allows you to choose when during the day you'd like to receive static updates. The static updates just tell you where the market's at and where it is in relation to open. So you can choose as many or as few of these as you'd like. Now the lenders area is when you can select your lenders. So for instance, we have a list of all lenders, but if you want to select your specific lenders, hit select lenders. This pops open a new list of fields here, and you can choose any of the lenders on our list and hit add lender. They'll automatically populate into your watch lenders list, and you can hit OK. Once you do that, make sure to hit the submit button so it saves your changes. The next part is application settings. Now application settings allows you to launch the application on Windows startup. That means it'll automatically start up every time you fire up your Windows. The second one is to minimize the application on close. Now what this means is that if you hit the X button up here, if you have this checkbox checked, RateWatch will just revert to your desktop down here. It will not completely close the software. The third one is play sound on alerts. This is if you want to disable the sound for the alerts. If you're working in a, a pretty tight quarters office and you want to make sure that this doesn't uh, disturb your coworkers, make sure to uncheck this box. Same thing with this one. You can play a sound on open or close of rate watch. You can uncheck that if you don't want sounds to come through. Now I should note for you Mac users, make sure to uncheck the box that says minimize application on close. Macs don't have the same type of minimization process, so you got to make sure to uncheck this so that your rate watch performs correctly when you close it. The last part is Edge. And this is just a single checkbox that enables you to view the Edge alerts. So if you leave this unchecked, you won't get any alerts when people view your, your Edge presentation. So make sure and check this so you can see any alerts that come through. When you're done, hit Submit, and you can close out the settings. 
Now your rate watch is completely set up and ready to go. If you have any further questions on how to configure your rate watch, please send us an email over at support at mortgagecoach.com. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.